We're saying goodbye to Miami Vice by taking a look at the two-hour series finale, Free Fall. Free Fall was directed by Russ Mayberry and was written by William Conway and Ken Solaris from a story idea by Solaris, Scott Shepard, and Frank Holman. It aired on NBC on May 21st, 1989, and it brought Crockett and Tubbs' five-year journey as partners on the Vice Squad to a graceful and logical conclusion. Crockett and Tubbs trail a dealer named Raymond, who is played by Ally McBeal's Greg Gurman, across Miami in a chase scene set to Year Zero by King Swamp. The chase ends when Crockett and Tubbs are apprehended by a bunch of armed men and taken to an undisclosed location. They meet Colonel Baker, played by Sherman Howard, who works for a three-letter agency and who wants to recruit them for a dangerous mission. Posing as drug dealers, go to the Central American nation of Costa Morada and smuggle out a brutal and corrupt dictator named Manuel Bourbon before he can be overthrown by guerrilla forces. Bourbon has worked closely with the drug cartels and is willing to tell U.S. intelligence everything he knows in exchange for protection. The cartels have vowed to kill him before he can leave the country. Crockett and Tubbs loathe the idea of aiding a murderous dictator, so they turn down the offer. While discussing it later over drinks, while Cry in Shame by Lyle Lovett and his large band plays, they reach the agreement that bringing down cartels outweighs their moral qualms about aiding a scumbag and they take the assignment. They fly to Costa Morada to the strains of No Way Out, which was written by series composer Tim Truman and sung by Don Johnson. They're met at the airport by their presumed contact, who promptly tries to murder them. They're rescued by their real contact, a beautiful nun named Felicia, who is played by Elpida Carrillo, who we saw earlier this season as Tubbs's murderous love interest in To Have and to Hold. Meanwhile, Bourbon's right-hand man Amendez, played by Star Trek Voyager's Robert Beltran, meets with the leader of a cartel, a man named Montoya, who is played by Alfredo Alvarez. Alvarez Calderon, whom we saw earlier this season getting horsewhipped by Trudy in Asian Cut. Montoya recruits Amendez to assassinate Bourbon. Crockett meets with Amendez and General Bourbon's daughter Bianca, played by Maria Strova, to go over the plan for smuggling Bourbon out of the country. Amendez is nervous and jittery, and Crockett figures he's planning to betray them. Bourbon throws a cocktail party at his mansion, where he reassures his wealthy supporters that, despite the guerrilla unrest, he has the situation under control. Bourbon, by the way, is played by the glorious Ian McShane, last seen in the episode Knock Knock Who's There. Amendez smuggles Bourbon out of the party with the intention of killing him, but he's stopped by Crockett and Tubbs. Crockett, Tubbs, Bourbon, and Bianca all get away safely, but during the escape, Felicia is shot and killed. To the on-the-nose strains of Ship of Fools by Robert Plant, Crockett and Tubbs take Bourbon and Bianca to Miami in a boat. Bourbon sustained a minor gunshot wound in the escape, but is expected to recover. Meanwhile, Montoya flies to Miami to kill Bourbon before he can talk to government agents. Crockett and Tubbs stash Bianca and Bourbon in a safe house where the vice detectives take turns guarding them. Gina and Trudy, who are barely in this finale, but in a quick appearance when Crockett and Tubbs relieve them of their shift. I'm sorry, ladies, you were an important part of this series, and you deserved to be a bigger part of this farewell. The safe house is raided by Montoya's assassins, and Crockett, Tubbs, and Switek manage to fight them off. Afterward, they discover Bourbon has vanished. They question Bianca, who tells him her father has a bank account in Miami. Meanwhile, Switek is accosted in his home by Montoya, who has bought up his gambling debts and wants him to lead him to Bourbon as repayment. Phil Collins's Land of Confusion plays during this scene. It's it's a great song. It's one that feels as apt today as it did in 1989, and I'm glad they managed to work some Collins into the finale, considering how intrinsically linked his music has been to Miami Vice ever since that iconic use of In the Air Tonight in the pilot episode. Tubbs and Crockett stake out Bourbon's bank and follow his mistress back to Bourbon's love nest after she withdraws money for him. Montoya's goons get the same idea, and there's a shootout at the love nest. Tubbs and Crockett get Bourbon to safety, but it's clear someone's been leaking information as to their whereabouts. Castillo calls Switek into his office to ask him if he gave information about Bourbon to Montoya to repay his debt. Switek denies this, which is the truth, but also insists that his gambling problem is a thing of the past, which is very much not the truth. A grim and weary Castillo suspends Switek indefinitely, and it's a very sad scene. Montoya's assassins show up at an empty building on the dock where Switek has told them Bourbon is hiding. Instead, they walk into a trap. Switek tells them via video that the building is wired to explode. They run outside, Switek tries to arrest them, they open fire, and Switek ends up killing them all. Crockett and Tubbs talk to Izzy, who gives them the name of a man named Miranda, who had hired the hitman on Montoya's behalf. Tubbs visits Miranda, who is played by Roger Preto, who we've seen in a handful of episodes, including Definitely Miami and Killshot. Montoya bursts in on them and captures Tubbs at gunpoint. Crockett, who has been going through financial records given to him by Montoya's accountant, gets a call from Montoya, who tells him to bring him Bourbon or he'll kill Tubbs. Montoya's financial records indicate that police commissioner Highsmith, whom we met a few episodes back in Over the Line, has been taking bribes from Montoya. 
Montoya. Crockett breaks into Highsmith's home and confronts him with this, then demands his help in getting Tubbs back. Highsmith leads Vice to the shack where Montoya is holding Tubbs. Crockett rescues Tubbs, and the police kill Montoya and his henchmen, but Highsmith is also killed. Crockett and Tubbs try to deliver Bourbon to the government agents. They're intercepted by armed gunmen, who are working with Raymond, the drug dealer from the opening sequence, who's been working for whoever pays him the most money. Raymond shoots Bourbon and dumps his body in the trunk of his car and drives off. Bourbon's charred remains are later found in a ditch, but the autopsy doesn't mention the gunshot wound he sustained while fleeing Costa Morada. Crockett calls the coroner, and she says the autopsy's forged. Crockett and Tubbs talk to Bourbon's mistress, who confirms that Bourbon is still alive. Colonel Baker and his unnamed government agency brought him to the U.S. not to have him help bring down the cartels, but because he knows sensitive information about high-placed government figures, which they want to keep secret. Realizing the U.S. government put them in mortal danger to protect a murderous dictator for no good reason, Crockett and Tubbs vow to bring down Bourbon. They go to headquarters one final time to pick up a whole bunch of weapons, and then they drive through dark Miami streets in Crockett's Ferrari one final time in a montage set to Bad Attitude by Honeymoon Suite. They arrive at the waterfront just as Bourbon's seaplane is getting ready to take off. Bourbon orders the men aiding his escape to kill Crockett and Tubbs. His seaplane takes to the air, and after one final gunfight, Crockett and Tubbs shoot it down. Dawn breaks, and Colonel Baker arrives, furious with Crockett and Tubbs for killing Bourbon. He tells them he can easily have them killed, whereupon Crockett and Tubbs throw down their badges. Castillo arrives, even sadder and grimmer than usual, and asks them to reconsider. In the next scene, Crockett is leaving his boat for the final time. Tubbs drops by, and Crockett offers to drive him to the airport, where Tubbs is catching a flight back to the Bronx. They shake hands, and both Don Johnson and Philip Michael Thomas are clearly fighting back tears, and then they have a good giggle about how Crockett is totally stealing the Ferrari. Over a final shot of them driving off in the Ferrari, they replay the dialogue from the pilot episode where Crockett asks Tubbs if he's ever considered a career in Southern law enforcement, and Tubbs replies, maybe. Credits roll over a montage of scenes from the entire series set to Tell Me by Terry Kath. Yeah, I'm giving this five flamingos. How could I do anything else? Overall, it's kind of a long, shaggy, rambling episode, and lord knows I'd wish they'd given more to do to Gina and Trudy, but the heart of the series has always been the bond between Crockett and Tubbs, and the main theme of the series has been their struggle to retain their souls while surrounded by the unending corruption and violence of undercover work. And in that regard, this episode really delivered. Throughout the episode, Tubbs keeps having a weird sense of foreboding that he's not going to make it out alive. And yeah, apparently the original plan was to kill Tubbs off. I'm so glad they didn't go in that direction. Having them both get out of this alive just seems right. It's an optimistic ending, which I wouldn't have necessarily predicted for Miami Vice, but I love it. Crockett and Tubbs are both deeply burned out and damaged, but there's a sense that now they're going to be okay. What a gorgeous and remarkable series, and it's been an absolute pleasure revisiting it from start to finish for these reviews. There have been some very high highs and a small handful of lows, but if I had to pick my top 10 episodes, they would be in order of airing, Evan, Out Where the Buses Don't Run, Bushido, Definitely Miami, Payback, Shadow in the Dark, Death and the Lady, Mere Image, Hostile Takeover, and Redemption in Blood. There are a bunch of others jockeying for a position on that list, but if I absolutely had to limit myself to 10 episodes to watch for the rest of my life, it would be those 10. Over the course of 100 plus episodes, I've said about as many words on Miami Vice as I can reasonably say. However, I would be remiss if I didn't give one final sweeping blanket of praise to the series' creators, directors, writers, set designers, costume designers, music supervisors and composers, art directors, and anyone who had any sort of input into this magnificent series's iconic look and feel. And of course, the highest possible kudos to Edward James Olmos, Sandra Santiago, Olivia Brown, Michael Talbot, John Deal, Martin Ferrero, and of course, Don Johnson and Philip Michael Thomas, all of whom acted their socks off in these episodes and gave us some of television's most complex and endearing characters. And thank you all so much for joining me here. It has been an absolute blast sharing my ideas on Miami Vice with you. Goodbye and good wishes. Thank you.